Hello everyone, Brandon here with GDNTBasics.com. Uh, today's video question line topic is using runout to measure concentricity. Our question today comes from Jeff and he wrote, Hi, we are in the discussion here that concentricity is equal to half the runout. So if you measure runout, you would divide that in half to get the concentricity. So let's first look at the definition from the standard. Uh, ASME Y14.5 defines concentricity as the requirement where the derived median points of all diametrically opposed elements must align with the axis of the datum feature. So I've thrown in this little drawing example here. You can see that uh, datum A, datum feature A, is the 36 millimeter diameter with tolerance of plus or minus 50 microns. And then on the smaller diameter over here on the shoulder, we have 24 millimeters plus or minus 100 microns. Uh, that does have the concentricity call out on it. And notice that there is a diameter symbol here that uh, with, the, with the tolerance there. That diameter symbol uh, states that the shape of the tolerance zone will be a cylinder. And the size of that cylinder will be um, 30 microns. So the diameter here is going to be 30 microns. So that will be located uh, coaxial, perfectly coaxial to the datum axis. Uh, again, the datum axis that we're looking at here is going to be the length of this shoulder. This is an incomplete drawing. Uh, we do we need some links, you know, overall links and all of that, which we haven't included. But for the purpose of what we're looking at, this will suit just fine. Um, so going back to that definition of diametric points. In order to inspect this, we're going to drop our CMM down here and, and basically this section right here, we're going to go and probe a point here. And then we're going to take the diametrically opposed point, so we're going to go 180 degrees around and we're going to probe this one. Now once we get that, it's going to give us this, uh, the, the median point between those two probed uh, outside surface points. So we get that median point. We do that once. Now to create a circle, we have to take a, a minimum of three, which means six probe points. Most shops, we're gonna do uh, four, five, even six, which means a total of 12 points for this. Uh, but once you establish all those, if you were to zoom in and look at this, you're gonna have, looking straight down the axis, this is that diameter of 0 0.030. Uh, that's the tolerance zone there. So all of these uh, derived medium points must fit inside of this cylinder. So to show you what that looks like now in 3D. Uh, you can see here we've taken all of these points now. Like I said, all of those points must fit inside of that cylinder. And looking at the side view here, you can see all of them in there. So any outliers on here, anything that was out here or out here or over here, those are all going to be failures. Now you can tell this is a three-dimensional tolerance zone, so this isn't going to be something that we would measure with a dial indicator like we would run out. So let's look at run out here real quick. Uh, make sure everybody's clear on the on the uh, definition or the understanding here of run out. Uh, now the question was about run out. Um, I took the assumption that it was not total run out, so I'm doing my comparison to just run out. Uh, so on this one here, you can see I've changed the drawing up. Now the drawing has on here a, uh, a runout requirement of 0 0.030. So you can see that right here. Uh, our datum axis, again, is still right here. So the datum axis is still the same. The difference now, though, is that instead of having, we don't have the diameter symbol here. So that's not in place here. Uh, for runout because runout is a surface control. Uh, whereas concentricity, it was the derived median points and we did have a cylindrical tolerance zone about the axis, perfectly aligned and orientated. Uh, now we have these two circles. Uh, you can see them clearly down here. Uh, on this view here, uh, you can see them, but it's the blue one here on the outside, blue one on the inside. So. The way that we take the measurements on these, instead of all the derived median points, is we simply slap an indicator on here. You can see up here that this part is sitting in a chuck. We've got a dial indicator on it. According to the standard, that dial indicator is supposed to be perpendicular uh, to the or the axis. 
So on this one here, we come in, we zero out that dial indicator. We revolve it around 360 degrees. And we're going to be looking for a result that's, I mean, we want perfect, obviously, but we're going to get something like this one or something like this one where uh, we could have a, an egg shape, could be lobed, um, perfectly centered, uh, but the actual surface is going, you know, it's egg shaped, so you're getting a positive negative reading on that dial indicator. Um, so on this one here, if this was set to zero, then you would be zero once it got around to this part. Your drop would be here and then hopefully equal back to the opposite side. If the shape itself is perfectly circular but just off centered, then you're going to have it zeroed here. Your furthest reading or furthest deviation is going to be once you get to 180 degrees from that um, and then come back around to zero again. Now with the run out, you are only checking the surface itself uh, at any given point along that surface and it is two dimensional now with run out. It is not three dimensional like concentricity. So uh, according to the standard, uh, this is two dimensional. If you're checking run out, you're not verifying uh, concentricity. But a lot of us that have, uh, have a past in machining know that this is what machinists have to do. And what they're going to do is set it up on zero. And now the hard part about this is if you're on an old engine lathe, according to the standard, you're supposed to get that 180 degree uh, diametric point back over here. So you need to know that you're going 180 degrees. If you can program the lathe to uh, on the C-axis to rotate 180 and stop and check it over there, um, and you can go to 120 degrees or some you know exact uh, angular rotation so that you can get the opposing element, uh, then you could do the math and you could figure out concentricity uh, using this method. But again, according to the standard, that is that's not the acceptable approach to this. It's supposed to be a cylindrical tolerance zone. You're not supposed to be using a dial indicator, even though machinists are going to do that. And we call that for the machinist a sanity check uh, because it does allow them to get to the point where they're confident that they've met the requirement, even if they're not checking it according to the standard. So I hope that answers your question there, Jeff. Anybody else who may have questions about uh, using runout to check concentricity? The total runout may be the better option here, but, but again, I've, I've done this personally myself. It does work. Uh, it may not be acceptable to any kind of ISO on it, but uh, this does get us there. Okay, uh, keep checking out our videos at gdntbasics.com, and you guys have a good day. Thanks.